What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. Today I'm going to share with you three envelopes I just recently got back in the mail, so we'll just jump right into these. And the first return is from former Minnesota Twin left-handed pitcher Jack O'Connor slash Baltimore Oriole Jack O'Connor on three. And of course, my fourth all-time Orioles card. And he signed the all-time Orioles card, but I find it ironic that they didn't have a picture of him wearing an Orioles uniform. He's actually wearing, as you can see, a Minnesota Twins hat on the card. But right here is proof that there's actually pictures of him pitching as a Baltimore Oriole. But for whatever reason, Crown Coca-Cola didn't use a Orioles image for their set. So I find that kind of strange. That's the first that I've come across in this all-time Orioles set that the picture is not actually of him as an Oriole. So let me tell you about Jack O'Connor and his playing career in Major League Baseball. Standing at six foot three, two 215 pounds, the left-handed throwing Jack O'Connor was drafted by the Montreal Expos in the ninth round out of high school in the 1976 draft. At 18 years old, he would start out in the Expos rookie ball affiliate and work, would work his way up until 1980 all the way up to AAA for the Expos. However, he ne never made a major league debut at the Expos and in the following year, 1980, he was selected in the Rule 5 draft by the Minnesota Twins. Well, in 1981, he made his major league debut at 23 years old and the left-handed relief pitcher appeared in 28 games for the Twins, posting a 3-2 record with a 5.86 ERA. Well, in 1982, he was splitting time between AAA and the Majors with the Twins, and he posted an 8-9 record in 23 games, and actually was a starter for the Twins that year in 1982. Well, in 1983, he again split time between AAA and the Majors for the Twins, and his final totals were 2-3, and three, and 27 appearances with 8 starts for the Twins that year. 1984, however, he would spend almost the entire season in AAA, where he would no longer be a starter, but appear in 48 games and post a 9-5 record for the Twins in the 84 season in their AAA affiliate. He would only appear in two games for the Twins in 84. Well, after the 84 season, the Twins traded him back to the team that originally drafted him, the Montreal Expos, for Mike Stainhouse. The Expos had him appear in 20 games in 1985, where he posted a 0-2 record with a 4.94 year ERA, but more importantly spent the majority of the 85 season in AAA for the Expos, where he appeared in 42 games. After the 85 season, the Expos released him and he signed a minor league deal with the Seattle Mariners. He spent the entire 1986 season in AAA for the Mariners, never making an appearance in the majors. The following year in 1987, he would sign with the Baltimore Orioles, where he would appear in 25 games for the Orioles in AAA, posting a 3-0 record with a 2.67 ERA. But more importantly, in the majors in 1987, he would go 1-1, one one, appearing in 29 games for the Orioles. Despite posting solid numbers for the Orioles, he was let go after the 87 season, and he signed with the Toronto Blue Jays. The Blue Jays in 1988 and 1989 uh, relegated him to AAA duties, and he never made an appearance with the Blue Jays at the Major League level. Well, in 1989, at 31 years old, after finishing the year up in AAA with the Blue Jays, O'Connor never pitched in the Majors or in affiliated baseball again. So, I'm not really sure what Jack did after his career, but uh, very happy to add another Baltimore Oriole, all-time Orioles card to the collection. Also a regular Orioles card, but, uh, you know, kind of a journeyman lefty, as they talk about. You know, if you're a left left-handed pitcher, you get multiple opportunities, and Jack is one of those guys that uh, hung around because he was a lefty. So we'll move on to the next one. All right, so this next one, there's some actual bonuses included. 
And um, I'll start with this. We got a return from former Phillies lefty pitcher, Randy Lurch, on one. And I actually have the quad rookie card of him, which makes two. And I actually had two senior league cards. So I got a couple more senior league card returns, which makes four. And in addition to that, he also sent this magnet, which has a, I'm guessing his f favorite Bible scripture verse. And he also included a business card with his book that he wrote, God in the Bullpen, the Randy Lurch, Lurch story, and it has, you know, you can get it on Amazon, barnesandnoble.com, or Google Books, but there's also his email address, which I'm guessing you can probably email him and get a copy as well. So let me tell you about Randy Lurch and his career in baseball. Um, let me step back and say it's, you know, Mike Avery recently passed away, so unfortunately I'll not, never be able to get this quad card finished. That's unfortunate, but... Um, you know, Mike Avery is one of those guys that only appeared in like six games or something like that. So, um, rest in peace, Mike. But uh, that card's never going to be completed. So, anyways, let me tell you about Randy Lurch. Lurch was born in Sacramento, California and attended high school at Cordova High School in Rancho Cordova, California. Lurch was drafted by the Phillies in 1973 and made his major league debut with the Phillies in September of 1975. His first full season was 1977, as he was a mainstay in the Phillies pitching rotation from 1977 until 1988 when he became pitching more as a relief pitcher. Lurch was an integral part of the Phillies' success in the late 70s and the 1980 World Series winning team. Uh, one of the career highlights that he had was on September 30, 1978, Lurch hit two home runs in a 10 eight win that clinched the National League East Division Championship for the Phillies. So that's pretty cool that the pitcher went yard twice in the same game to win that game for the Phillies. Uh, Lurch was part of the Phillies 80 World Series winning team, though he led the league in losses that season with 14 and never appeared in the World Series. I'm not going I'm just going to kind of talk about this rather quickly, but you can read about it more in his book right here, but Lurch openly talked about and testified about the use of amphetamines with the Phillies organization. Uh, shortly after he testified, uh, he found his walking papers and the fact that he was traded in 1981 to the Brewers. He only played that one season with the Brewers before he was sold to the Montreal Expos in 1982, who later released him in July of 83. He then signed with the San Francisco Giants less than two weeks later after being released by the Expos. So after the 84 season, I guess the hard feelings were over because he re-signed with the Philadelphia Phillies. Unfortunately, the time with the Phillies wasn't that long as the Phillies decided to let him go in June of 1986 and released him from his contract. Overall, Lurch's career record was 60 wins and 64 losses with a 4.53 earned run average. As a hitter, he actually had a career 206 batting average with four home runs and 23 RBIs over his career. He also had a 966 fielding percentage, which is 13 points higher than most pitchers at that position. So overall, Lurch was a pretty good athlete. He could hit the ball, he could pitch the ball, and eventually he decided in 2019 to release a memoir talking about his baseball career and his battle with drug and alcohol addiction. Since his retirement and writing his memoir, Lurch now resides in California. I'm guessing he's enjoying retirement. And I'm very happy to add his autograph to my collection. If anybody is interested, again, in contacting Mr. Lurch, definitely consider doing so. His email address is right there. And I'm sure he'd be more than happy to sell you a book. I have not personally contacted him, but I'm sure, you know, maybe if I uh, get some free time, maybe I will do so to get his book. And if I do, I'll share it on this channel. So we'll move on to the next one. All right, so this final one I am super excited to share with you. This is a return from Kansas, and it is the completion of my Orioles Future Stars card, now fully completed 
with Mike Bodiger. And if you guys recall from previous episodes, I got Floyd Rayford and Mark Corey to sign those. So you're probably asking, well, why didn't you send them your all-time Orioles card? Here's the honest truth. Uh, Mr. Bodiger does require a small fee, $5. And when I went to go stuff my envelope, all I could find was a $5 bill. I didn't have a 10 I didn't want to send $20 because that would be four cards. So I just said, you know what? $5 is enough. We'll send the all-time Orioles card at a later date. I just want to get this one signed. So I'm happy to report that Mr. Bodiger has now completed my 1981 Tops Orioles Future Stars card. So let me tell you about Mike Bodiger and his career in baseball. Mike Bodiger grew up in Iowa, in a small town in Iowa, and also attended the University of Iowa at Iowa City. He was originally drafted out of high school in the eighth round, but chose not to sign and instead went to the University of Iowa and was drafted again in 1978 by the Orioles in the sixth round. Bodiger spent a couple years in the minors and he was so successful that in 1980, the Orioles promoted him for one game to the major leagues where he made one start and lost that game eventually. Well, the next year, in 1981, he spent the mostly entire year at AAA where he had a 10-10 record but got to pitch in two games at the Major League level for the Orioles. Well, in 1982, again, he would start the year in AAA where he would post a 10-5 record with a 3.58 ERA, which garnered him a call-up for seven games where he went 1-0 for the Orioles. Well, in 1983, the Orioles again kept him in AAA only shortly, but he joined the Orioles in 1983 where he would break out and have a 16-8 record, helping the Orioles win the World Series and posting a 2.77 ERA. Well, after that superb season in 1983, he would come in 1984 and lead the league in wins, going 20 wins and 11 losses, and also having a league-leading ERA of just 2.79 for the Orioles in 34 games that year. In 1985, however, he didn't grab the magic that he did in 84, where he just went 12-17 and that season for the Orioles. 1986, he got his record again above 500, where he went 14-12, but in 1987, his record again dipped below 500 for the Orioles as a starter. In 1988, he started the season with the Orioles, but after just going 6 and 12, the Orioles traded him to the Boston Red Sox for outfielder Brady Anderson and Kurt Schilling. Who got the better part of that deal? Is all I have to say. <laughs> well, it's not that Bodiger didn't do well for the Boston Red Sox. He actually went 15-11 and 11 his first full season with the Red Sox. His second season with the Red Sox in 1990, he went 17-8. and eight. And after this, the Red Sox tried to re-sign him, but he chose instead to sign as a free agent with the Kansas City Royals. After signing the big free agent deal, Bodiger just went 12-12 12 12 with the Royals, appearing in 30 games his first year in 1991 with the club. At age 34, his second year with the Royals was not as good, where he only appeared in 29 games, starting only 8 for the club, posting a 1-4 and record. Going into the 1993 season, the Milwaukee Brewers picked up Bodiger from the Royals early in the season in April. He would finish the 1993 season going 3-5 and for the Milwaukee Brewers, and after the 93 season, at 35 years old, retired from baseball. So... A couple neat things to talk about Bodiger is there's some pretty interesting quotes on his Wikipedia page. The great Rod Carew would call Bodiger's pitching Little League Slop because of all the off-speed pitches and deception that he would throw and his lack of power. Uh, Bodiger could not throw a fastball over 90 miles per hour. And uh, Tony Phillips once said, what I noticed about him that he lets you get yourself out. I find myself sometimes actually jumping at his pitches, being over anxious because he doesn't throw very fast, and I wind up popping the ball up. So this was one of those guys that learned 
You don't have to be the biggest and the strongest and throw the hardest. You just have to have good control and good command of your pitches and you can have a successful career. Bodiger never matched his 20, you know, his league leading 20 win season again, but overall he had a pretty decent long career, you know, almost spanning 15 years playing professional baseball uh, in the major leagues. So very, very happy to finish off this card in my collection. Very happy to add another all-time Orioles card signed along with a couple others of Jack O'Connor. Also happy to add Randy Lurch to the collection as well on a couple more senior league cards. Absolutely love getting these senior league cards signed. I hope you enjoyed another episode and remember the great sports through the mail Thursdays. Please leave your comments. Look forward to what you have to say and as always, happy collecting. <laughs>